What is up, guys? NCAA 13 online gameplay, friends list game. I'm on a bit of a video binge lately. But, um, here we go. Georgia Tech, Miami. Fairly even matchup as far as team grades go. Running Georgia Tech's default playbook and running the 4 2 5 on defense and you're gonna see that Georgia Tech does not run the 4-2-5 very well too slow on the defensive line not good enough in coverage to handle you know what Miami's got but I'm gonna talk about the flex bone on offense most of the time this sucker as you're gonna see Stephen Morris there's just nothing on the defensive line there um, scramble for a touchdown he's only got like 73 something speed I'm not gonna waste a spy on Stephen Morse I refuse <laughs> but um anyhow is it me or has there been no NCAA 14 footage news updates in quite some time you know considering that the game comes out in about a month not quite sure what to make of that I really hope that EA is not giving NCAA football the red-headed stepchild treatment this year. But, as far as NCAA 14 goes, as it relates to this game, a missed tackle and he's gone. Nope, not quite gone. Trying to bring the barn here, he cuts that speed option up. Stephen Morris, the one-man band so far. But, um, Flexbone. EA Sports, fix the flex bone for the love of God. What kind of problems and issues do we have with the flex bone? Where to begin? First of all, in general, I don't think EA Sports understands option football. When you look at the atrocity that is read option defense in this game, for example, it's like EA program the defensive end, you know give or keep read and forgot that there's 10 other people on the defense and when you run the option under center you see all kinds of wildness going on both from your own guys and the defenders you don't know who's going to be getting the pitch man or the quarterback or if anyone's going to be getting the quarterback for that matter so it kind of makes user option defense a guessing game as you pretty much have to you know pray that your guys are going to follow assignments which makes things kind of tough but um, that's just one aspect of running a flex bone offense the fullback dive game is a complete waste of time fullback trap complete waste of time when you run a fullback dive you'd never get any offensive line push so your fullback either runs up the back of his offensive lineman or you have to bounce it outside and pray that you can get there fullback trap the pulling card doesn't lead through the hole so that gets blown up more often than not most of my yardage out of the flex bone when I'm running the ball either comes from uh, a fullback draw here and there, a wingback toss or a sweep, speed option, trap option, triple option. And there's a great touch pass by Kevin Washington. Wow. Kind of bummed that bad, bad Lee's not in the game this year. Because Kevin Washington, he's pretty quick, but he never breaks any tackles, never makes any guys miss. And I would really like to have someone more explosive there, but I guess I'll have it in 14 with Bad Vad taking the snaps. So, in the flex bone, the fullback is a complete waste of time. He's not a factor in the ground game whatsoever unless you get a um, keep read on the triple and hopefully someone is not blitzing through that gap. So... Basically, it allows people to just blitz the flex bone like crazy. And plus, there are certain fronts in the game that the offense just cannot block. Like we ran this game back, and he ran a 3-4 defense, and I couldn't do a thing. Completely stoned the offense completely. Totally. 
because when you're facing a three-man defensive line, sometimes you get a defensive end read, sometimes you get an outside linebacker read, sometimes you get no read. So, you know, good luck running the option and having to make that decision and without knowing who the heck you're keying off of. And then the same problems exist as far as the blocking for the fullback runs. They're pretty much non-existent. So most of your yards have to come from the perimeter, which makes it easier to defend because anyone with any experience in this game knows that. It's like, here's my wing back sweep, slot back sweep, touchdown. Everything is perimeter oriented. There I happen to, you know, eke out two or three yards there because I got a um, keep read. And I have one dangerous receiver and of course you tend to see a lot of one-on-one -on -one coverage anytime you run anything under center in this game online and with the flex you gotta respect the option game so you see a lot of blitzes so if you have that one-on-one -on -one threat outside like I went to matchups some good things can happen for you user INT ball hawk was my friend there this is the quick option, which I basically treat as a QB ISO. If I see a gap there, I just cut it up. And <laughs> I didn't mean to pitch it that late. Sometimes that's going to happen. I mean, it's not nearly as bad as some of the horror shows in past NCAAs, where you can be near on the ground and you still have to get the pitch off. And there I ran the wingback toss. And I'm able to at least gain enough positive yards with the fullback to pound that sucker in. So I, you know, eke this sucker out in overtime. But yeah, hopefully in NCAA 14, the blocking logic is tuned up as advertised, which can make not just a flex bone, but any type of under center based pro style offense more viable. I mean, this year, this game was all about the spread. Spread, spread, spread. And of course, throw, throw, throw. Why bother running the ball 30, 40 times when you've got all these open receivers all over the place that you can lead past to? So, there you go. Hope you guys enjoyed. Talk to you all later.